as a gay elder, as a gay elder mystic, as the founder of sacred activism, which I believe could not have been founded except by a gay man inflamed with his passion for justice and also a knowledge of who he was and who you are. So I'm going to speak to you as someone who knows that myself is deathless, who knows that the divine is totally real, living in everything, in every process. And I'm going to speak to you from the depths of my heart about two words, gay liberation. Look, my friends, the pride that we are now going to celebrate in this month of gay pride, that pride is immense and joyful and celebratory beyond anything we could imagine this year, because we are being invited by the global catastrophe that we're in to celebrate in two overwhelming ways, which will show us the true meaning of that word, that phrase, gay liberation. The first way that we will celebrate this month, this month of June in the middle of an exploding global dark night, the first way is that we'll stand up and we will cry out with joy that the Supreme Court made it impossible to fire gay and transgender people. That is an amazing victory for human dignity. That is something that the angels are dancing naked in heaven about. Because finally, finally, this culture is beginning to begin to understand the torment and horror that have been visited upon transgender people and are at last, at last, doing something real about it. And in so doing, honoring all the victories that we as passionate gay activists, as gay and lesbian people who refuse to sit down and accept a disgusting version of ourselves, but fought for the dignity to love whom we wanted. That is what we did and those victories support this victory. And when we celebrate this month, we celebrate gay marriage, we celebrate the dignity of male love that is now represented at last in the media. We celebrate the out politicians like Pete Buttigieg who gave such a beautiful natural model to us of how to be gay and dignified and brilliant and really focused on real issues. We celebrate all of these amazing things. But that celebration doesn't go far enough and doesn't take you into the deepest meaning of the words gay liberation. Because what gay liberation really means is not only the liberation of us from the terrible homophobia, the terrible degradation that we've been through so as last to be able to love with our full being and be honored in that love and live that love. That's only the first stage of gay liberation. And we have won so many victories in that way, but now we must take a plunge into the deepest meaning of what it is to be liberated, what it is to taste so deeply the divine essence of who you are and the divine meaning of where you are and what you're being challenged to rise to, that you become inflamed by a wholly new level of passion and peace and purpose and focus and meaning. And as a gay elder mystic founder of sacred activism, I'm not going to give you any palliatives. I'm not going to give you anything sweet, anything that will in any way diminish the horror and the madness of the situation we're in. In fact, I'm going to really stress with my whole being how essential it is to grow up and face 
with total clarity the desolation and desperation and unique catastrophic concatenation of catastrophes that is now descending upon the earth because when you do when you're brave enough to use all that you've learned on this tremendous battlefield for gay rights that you've been fighting on when you're brave enough and you will be brave enough to face the horror and the madness of what's happening something very extraordinary will rise in the core of you you will realize the miraculous opportunity that this unprecedented set of crises is giving us so let's turn and look at those crises so that you can enter into the real holy madness of the celebration that I'm inviting you to. Look at these crises. The first overarching crisis is the climate crisis. And it is saying it's the climate crisis is like saying that the French Revolution was a rather bloody event. It's not a climate catastrophe crisis it's a climate apocalypse the climate is collapsing and the extinction process is going far faster than even the doomsayers were predicting that's the first crisis and that's the most important and that's going nowhere that's only getting worse but the great secret of that crisis is that it involves all of us every single human being and every single animal is affected by that crisis and one day one day soon there will be a series of catastrophes that will make that absolutely clear the second crisis that we are convulsed by globally is the pandemic crisis the crisis of the coronavirus and there is a terrible beauty in this crisis and that is that it is a totally egalitarian force. It attacks young and old, rich and poor, black and white, gay and straight, young and old. And in that omnipresent, omnidevouring, devastating cruelty, it gives us the opportunity, you and I, gay activists everywhere, to really break through all of our inhibitions, all of our levels of denial, all of our addictions to our own causes, our own rights, and realize that we have been called now to a tremendous revolution of love in action in which we must lose ourselves for the world to have any chance at all of surviving. This is a miraculous moment for you and I, because what it offers gay people is the secret hidden in the words gay liberation. It offers you and I, as gay people, the amazing spiritual evolutionary opportunity to take everything that we have learned and suffered on our journey to being treated with dignity. Take all of that knowledge, all of that passion, all of that understanding, and by offering our pain and our wisdom to the transformation of the planet, in a much vaster love, a much vaster activism that really addresses the third huge crisis that's happening, the economic collapse with all the systemic racism and horrifying violence breaking out in the streets because finally, finally, America is confronting its savage discussion disgusting, obscene, blasphemous wound of slavery. Isn't it our duty as gay men and women who know what it's like to suffer being degraded, suffer being mocked, suffer being excluded, suffer being economically battered, suffered, being derided in the press, all the kinds of suffering that we've been through, isn't it time that instead of just using it for expanding and protecting our rights, we stand up as sacred activists with all the glory of what we have been through in us 
and all the passion for compassion that that journey should have bred in us to stand up for the dignity of all African Americans. If we, this pride, are not celebrating our black brothers and sisters, celebrating Black Lives Matter, the heroic, amazing courage that African Americans have been showing on the streets, the unbelievable dignity, the agony, the rage that still doesn't exact revenge but calls for peace, the real Christ Africans shining out to us in their amazing truths. We must be celebrating them. We must be dancing for them. We must be singing for them. Because what does it mean if we are supposedly liberated to enjoy our free self-expression and they still swelter and burn in prisons of utter degraded, racist rage. That is our great challenge as a movement, but we're up to it. And the reason why we're up to it is because gay people have always been adventurers. And this is the greatest adventure of all to take on the full catastrophe of what's happening, but to realize there's a great, beautiful, holy diamond in the middle of it, this diamond of coming together beyond religion, beyond tribal variations, beyond nationality, beyond black or white, beyond gay or straight, beyond Muslim or Hindu or Christian, coming together as passionately concerned, deeply troubled, faithful, awakened human beings willing to help each other help the divine birth a new, humble, concerned, engaged, wise humanity. That's what we should be celebrating in this pride to that shattering open of all of our hearts to the new unity that must be established in every realm for the world to have a chance to survive and for the world to be given a miraculous opportunity to take horrible tragedy and out of passion and engagement on behalf of all of life, transform that horrible tragedy into the birth canal of a new embodied divine humanity in which gay activism would have an amazing rose in the middle of the rose garden offering up all the passion that we've learned on our journey to dignity, to the passion to establish dignity for all so the world can go on and we as gay people claim our glorious, adventurous, wild, holy role in that magnificent transfiguration of human history. I just want to leave by blessing you with words that continue to bless me and inspire me and give me the greatest possible joy and hope every single day. And these are words from my great beloved and your great beloved, Rumi, whose whole vision was born out of an immense soul love affair with a man, not a homosexual passion, but the ultimate passion between two human beings. And out of this great passion, which is the passion that we all want to incarnate and be a living flame of, he wrote these amazing words, he said, Passion burns down every branch of exhaustion. Passion is the supreme elixir and renews all things. So don't sigh heavily, your brow bleak with boredom. Dare to look for passion, 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 passion. Run, my friends, far from all false solutions. Let divine passion triumph and rebirth you 
in yourself. That's gay liberation. That's everything liberation. That's what it means to be alive with the passion of compassion to help and serve all beings because you know that is what love is and love does. That's gay liberation.